Today we're talking about what it means to be people of truth. Really? Yeah, really. Well, I don't believe you. Well, hello everyone and welcome to Camsa Connect. This is your weekly worship service from the Salvation Army Cambridge Citadel in the United Kingdom. We're very glad you've joined us today. As you can see, our theme is the whole truth. And a bit later on, we'll be looking at a very gritty story in Mark's Gospel about how John the Baptist met his gruesome end. Wow, very interesting. And uh, we want to say thanks to the Kamsa Connect Sings Group for getting our worship underway with that beautiful song. Thanks, guys. And actually, for all of our music today, we're taking a trip down memory lane and revisiting some of the best songs and musical items from our various music groups. Yes, we hope you enjoy hearing some of the more popular songs and pieces our groups have presented in recent months. We really do appreciate the support of our eight, eight music groups who are so regularly and faithfully preparing music to help our worship here in Kamsa Connect. Yeah, and if you think eight can't be right, well, there's the YP Band, Senior Band, Worship Band, Male Voices Group, Female Voices Group, Kamsa Connect Sings Group, Singing Company and Songsters. Eight groups. Eight of them, Leanne. Yeah, but don't forget about the timbrels either. 
Anyhow, also this week, we're thrilled to welcome back to Camza Connect a special guest. Major Linda Govier from our local headquarters office is bringing us today's Bible message. And uh, also, we want to give a huge cheer to our very own Gavin and Mary, who yesterday were commissioned as officers. God bless you, Lieutenant Gavin Mary, and of course, Isaac and Farah too. Okay, well, it's not easy to walk life's road knowing whether we are hearing the truth all of the time, but our opening hymn reminds us that from age to age, God is there to guide us along the way. Please join us as we sing, Thy hand, O God, has guided. for that good sing. Jesus had a lot to say about truth, you know. To his followers, he once declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And to the Roman governor who cross-examined him, Jesus said, I came into the world to testify to the truth. And the unbelieving Pontius Pilate asked, what is truth? And that's a question we'll be exploring today. Yes, the truth can be hard to recognize and accept, and it can be hard to tell too. We can't always say how we really feel, or sometimes may be embarrassed to admit we are afraid or ashamed, but we can tell the truth to God and leave it in God's hands. That's right, so for our prayers today, we're going to sing a song which presents us with the story of Jesus' death, resurrection, and his anticipated return at the end of time. And it asks us to consider the truth of who Jesus is and what he has done and can do for us all. First though, we'll share in prayer and we've asked our Sergeant Major Norman to lead us. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we are so thankful that you walk with us and strengthen us through our everyday lives. We give thanks for the glorious world that you created and for our brothers and sisters that we share it with. Lord, you know our hearts and minds, our comings and goings. In this life you have blessed us and for that we are truly grateful. Dear Father, as we come before you in prayer this morning, we want to admit our weaknesses to you. So often our spirit is willing, but our bodies and minds are weak. Sometimes we feel that we are far from you and we find that prayer doesn't come easy. So Father, 
Take pity on us in our weakness, like Jesus did with his disciples. Bring us closer to you, and may we claim your Holy Spirit, which dwells in us. Make us alert and persevering. Help us always to pray and seek your divine guidance. I thank you because you are always true to your word. You love those who speak the truth, and we want to have the desire to spread the truth of your word. Let that desire burn within us so that we will gain the power to speak that truth in all circumstances and to stand by it. So Lord, when we do speak, may we bring glory to your name and may we surrender those truths to you. They are in your hands to do with as you will. We know you have our best interests at heart and as we accept the consequences, whatever they may be, we know that you are there caring for us in the way you think is best. May we choose to trust you, Lord, because we know you love us and work all things together for our good. Thank you for your love for each and every one of us and for calling us to be a part of sharing it with the world. We pray all this in the precious name of Jesus, our Saviour and Lord. Amen.
Well, thanks for sharing it in prayer. And may we all, for endless days, praise the name of the Lord our God. Amen to that. Well, coming up shortly will be the weekly update and online offering. And we've got some music from our two young people's groups. Our young people's band is led by Lee and the singing company is led by Charlie, who's assisted by Francesca. Yeah, and we absolutely love our young people taking part in what we do here at Cambridge Citadel, don't we? And uh, we're so looking forward to seeing them sing and play in real life once again, hopefully soon. Yes, we hope you will be blessed by their music today. Well, we'll hear from the young people in just a moment. First, though, we're going to share the verses from today's Bible passage. And here to read them for us is Muriel. The reading this morning is taken from Mark chapter 6, commencing to read at verse 14. King Herod heard about this, for Jesus' name had become well known. Some were saying John the Baptist had been raised from the dead, and that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others said, He is Elijah. And still others claimed, He is a prophet, like one of the prophets of long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said, John, the man I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. For Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested, and he had him bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married. For John had been saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she was not able to, because Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be righteous and holy man. When Herod heard John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. Finally, the opportune time came on his birthday. Herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guests. The king said to the girl, Ask me for anything you want and I'll give it to you. And he promised her with an oath, Whatever you ask I will give you up to half my kingdom. She went out and said to her, Mother, What shall I ask for? The head of John the Baptist, she answered. At once the girl hurried in to the king with the request. I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was greatly distressed, but because of his oaths and his dinner guest, he did not want to refuse her. So he immediately sent an executioner with others to bring John's head. The man went beheaded John in the prison and brought him his head on a platter. He presented it to the girl and she gave it to her mother. On hearing of this, John's disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. Amen. Every second, every minute, Every hour of every day, you're the ever-present God throughout the years. Every village, every city, every road along the way, you're the God of everywhere and always here. Everything that's ever been You're the God of all 
to be reminded of those recent contributions from the singing company and the YP band. I do hope you enjoyed them. Good morning everybody. We are still waiting for the government's final assessment of restrictions that can be lifted as from the 19th of July. Hints have already been made which unfortunately don't make things much clearer. But in anticipation that we will be able to meet again, we are planning to have our first time of worship together at 10 a.m. on Sunday the 25th of July, which will be held in Cherry Hinton Road Barracks. Obviously, once the announcement has been formally made, arrangements will be confirmed or adjusted as necessary. Unfortunately, it's unlikely that there will be sufficient time to announce details on CAMSA Connect, so you will receive a direct communication from our officers during that week about it. However, before that, we have two more opportunities to meet together, taking the form of worship picnics. The first of which is taking place today at 1pm, weather permitting of course, and if you're going, I'll see you later. There's also another one planned for next Saturday the 17th of July, also at 1pm. We have secured the same venue and further details about location, parking and the like are in our officers update number 69. Recently, you should have received your army periodicals and prayer leaflets for July. You can pay for these and your cartridges, of course, in the usual way by cheque to Karen or by bank transfer. Each week on this same video channel or kids time every Sunday at 9am, followed by Camsa Connect at 10am. 
Due to illness in the Cordner family, last week's prayer matters didn't go ahead, but it will resume on Wednesday at 7pm. Because of England's success in reaching the semi-finals, there was a last minute change to Cam's to Connect Sings during the past week. However, it will revert to Wednesday at 8pm and, hopefully, England will have won the final by then. And maybe we could be singing Football's Coming Home this week. I'm not sure if there's an essay arrangement of that yet though. Anyway, that's all from me for now. And thanks for watching and listening. It's now time to give to the Lord in our offering. I'm gonna ride in by the chariot in the morning, Lord. I'm gonna ride by the chariot in the morning, Lord. I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready for the judgment day, my Lord, my Lord. I'm gonna ride by the chariot in the morning, Lord. I'm gonna ride by the chariot in the morning, Lord. I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready for the judgment day, my Lord, my Lord. Are you ready, my brother? Thanks very much for giving in the online offering. Don't forget, as always, if you'd like to give to the work of Cambridge Salvation Army without using the gift app, then instructions on how to do that are in the video description below. And aren't the fellas great? They look so angelic. I don't know if they are angelic in real life, but they certainly look angelic. True. Now, in a moment, we're going to hear a fabulous song from some of the ladies of Cambridge Citadel, a song we first heard on Mothering Sunday this year. But first, we've already acknowledged that it's not always easy to recognise the truth, so we need God's help to guide us. And it's not always easy to tell the truth either. To live as a person of truth is a challenge, but that's what God calls us to do. Yeah, and how easy is it for a lawyer to tell the truth? Well, one of our leaders here at Cambridge Citadel is our Corps Secretary, Karen. In her spare time, she assists us in the running of the Corps, but her day job is as a family lawyer here in Cambridge. A few days ago, we asked Karen to tell us how easy or difficult it is for her to be a Christian and living as a person of truth in today's legal world. Here's what she had to say. I swear by Almighty God, to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You might think that as I'm a lawyer, I hear those words all the time, but actually I'm a family lawyer, and it's not very often that my clients are in court giving evidence and having to take the oath. We try very hard to avoid the situation where parents or husbands and wives have to give evidence against each other. So as a lawyer, what does truth mean for me? Well, firstly, I'm an officer of the court, and so I have an obligation not to mislead the court. Secondly, our governing body, the Solicitor's Regulation Authority, says that all solicitors should act honestly and with integrity. 
So contrary to the view that most people have about lawyers, we are supposed to be honest and acting with integrity at all times. So what does that mean for me in my job? Well, it means that I try and be honest with my clients about their case and the arguments that we run. I don't write inflammatory letters just to score points. And sometimes I do tell clients that I won't run the case the way they want to. I particularly remember talking to one gentleman who was very clear that what he told me and what he was going to tell his wife were two very different things. And I told him that I wasn't the right solicitor for him. He would need to go and see somebody else. So I'm already under an obligation to act honestly and with integrity. So does being a Christian add anything else to that? Well, in terms of working with my colleagues, I do think it means that I can't cover up mistakes. I can't push the buck onto anyone else or try and blame a secretary. I've got to be honest and own up when I haven't done something completely right. But most of all, I think being a person of truth impacts on my relationship with God. It says in the Bible that we should worship God in spirit and in truth. And for me, that means that when I'm praying to God, the words that I say have got to be something that I actually mean and carry out in my life. So when I say I love God more than anything else, that has to be true. When I say I'm seeking his will and will obey it, that has to be true. When I say I'm giving forgiveness and not holding a grudge, that has to be true. And with God, well, really you can't hide anything anyway, because he sees right into our hearts and he knows everything about us. But still being honest can be difficult and sometimes it can even feel costly. So I hope that I am a person of truth, but I know that it's in my relationship with God that I have to really examine that the words that I say are echoed by the feelings in my heart and my actions. A little bit of love goes a long, long way. A little love, a little love, a little bit of love and I'm on my way. A little love, a little love, a long way but we'll get there together. A long way but we'll get there soon. A long love. courtroom so I'm relying on what I see in courtroom dramas. A witness before they give evidence has to make an oath that they will tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Today we're thinking about a man who spoke truth, who lived by truth and who died for speaking the truth. Muriel read to us the account of the death of John the Baptist. 
Earlier in the Bible, we see John the Baptist calling people to repent. That means to turn towards truth and away from your wrongdoing. And he baptised them as a symbol of the forgiveness of their sins. John the Baptist pointed people to Jesus and he taught the truth of who Jesus was. He taught that Jesus was the Messiah, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. John the Baptist spoke truth to power, and this was where things got difficult. We read that Herod, a political leader, was puzzled by him, but liked to hear him. But Herod's wife was not so keen to hear what John the Baptist had to say. And in fact, we read that she nursed a grudge against him and waited for an opportunity to have him killed because John the Baptist had spoken out against her marriage to Herod. Herod had married his sister-in-law while his brother was still alive. And John the Baptist knew that this was against Jewish law. Mark records these events for us in between an account of Jesus sending out his followers. Why does he include it here and do a flashback to the events of John the Baptist's death? Well, it may be because he wanted to show the readers the parallels between the life of John the Baptist and the life of Jesus and to foreshadow the events of Jesus' death. So we see in the verses just before those that Muriel read that Jesus sent his followers out to preach repentance, to drive out demons and to heal the sick. This is exciting kingdom work, something that we long to replicate in our times. We love to hear stories of people and places that God is blessing. Of course, where people are being saved and communities are being transformed because of the ministry of the Salvation Army. But Mark shows us that it can be costly to be a follower of Christ and to uphold the truth. Jesus was eventually arrested and killed for speaking truth. His followers were arrested, persecuted, some martyred for speaking the truth. And today, still, some Christians face the threat of death for speaking the truth, the good news of Jesus Christ. So are we up for the challenge of speaking truth, the whole truth? and nothing but the truth. The whole truth is that those who accept God's forgiveness must, by his help, live lifestyles that reflect God's character. And nothing but the truth will be enough. There can be no compromise. And this can be a great cost as we speak truth. But think for a moment of the consequence of ignoring the truth or twisting the truth. Eternally, there will be an even greater cost for those who do not speak truth and live by truth and turn to the truth. So today, we need to know Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. We need to know God's word. We need to know how to interpret it in our times. And we need the power of the Holy Spirit to enable us to live by the truth. I would be true, for there are those who trust me. 
I would be pure, for there are those who care. I would be strong, for there is much to suffer. I would be brave, for there is much to dare. Jesus will help me. He is my friend. He'll lead, and I will follow till life's very end. I pray that you will be able to say Amen to this prayer. Please join with us in prayer. Father God, thank you for today's Bible story, which reminded us that to be people of truth is important, but is also costly. Thank you for all those in our world who make sacrifices to ensure that the truth is spoken. Lord Jesus, you call us to say to you, I would be true. Grant us the power of your Holy Spirit to be people of truth. Help us to live our lives with integrity each day. And as you are the way, the truth and the life, show us your way, keep us in your truth and lead us into life. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us today, everyone. As you've heard, we're very much hoping to reconvene as a congregation in the near future, but our plan is to keep Kamsa Connect going in the coming months. So if you'd like to come and meet us here at Cambridge Citadel and see what we're all about, then we'd love to welcome you on Sunday. Yeah, definitely. All right then, well, next week on Kamsa Connect, we're going to be reminding ourselves about how Jesus healed so many people, and we're going to be recognising that we also need to have compassion for those around us. We've got a piano solo, a special story for the young people, and our male voice singers will be back, this time with a new song. It's going to be great. Fantastic. So don't forget to like this video if you did, and do click subscribe and the bell icon to be notified whenever we upload a new video. Well, for today's closing song, we're enlisting the help of our senior band, who with the help of this piece of music took us back to the discos of the 60s and 70s. We hope you will have a smile on your face as you sing Happy Song. So until next week, everyone, keep safe, keep well, and keep connected. God, God bless, bless you. you.